Throughout the rest of the state, you know, you're really well known in the 9th District, but throughout the rest of the state they may not as know you as well. Do you find that to be maybe a, one of your biggest challenges? I think that uh, that is going to be a challenge. I, I remember back before this life, I was traveling around the state uh, as a special prosecutor for the Attorney General. Um, see, what was his name again? Uh, I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some of you know my sense of humor. I hope other, uh, others appreciate it. Uh, and, and traveling around the state uh, then and courthouses all over, all over this great state. And yet those cases have been long since tried and prosecuted and convictions hopefully uh, affirmed. So the challenge for us now is to get around the state. I grew up down in southeast Missouri. Uh, the number of people that, uh, that have been calling to express their good wishes and their offers of support, uh, especially from that area, have been overwhelming, uh, really humbling. Uh, but there is, uh, there's a big state out there. And today we embark on that journey to try to help uh, get acquainted with people around the state. You considered running before. What's different about this time that you're actually following through? What happened, uh, and I don't think he would mind just sharing this little personal story, is we had come to the decision right after the 02 election that the governorship was something we aspired to. And uh, Matt Blunt and I, and, and for the record, uh, somewhere along the way, someone has suggested in the media that uh, Matt and I are not friends. We are very close friends, and he has been a loyal uh, supporter of late. Uh, he and I had a very cordial dinner together, and he announced his intention to run. And this was in November of 2002, and I expressed my intention to run. We shook hands and said this will be a, a, a campaign based on issues. And so uh, that week he began working his side of the street. I started working my side of the street, and that was on a Monday. Uh, on Friday, my father passed away unexpectedly, and uh, my priorities uh, shifted dramatically. As an only kid, I, of course, rushed to my mom's side and tried to do what I could for her. Uh, we own now and operate a family farm, a family business that mom and dad built from 1956 with $1,000 in their pocket. And so we then had to go through the process of deciding, is this the right time? We decided that it was more important to put personal ambitions aside to do what was in the best Republican interest of our Republican opponents, uh, Sarah Steelman and Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder, have both run statewide campaigns and won before. They have the organization in place that you, statewide organization in place that you haven't done before. Um, just this past week, a bunch of prominent Republican donors on behalf of Peter Kinder wrote to the Republican Governors Association asking him to support him. First of all, how are you going to plan on organizing a statewide campaign when you've never done that before? And what is your response to this letter sent by donors? Uh, for Kinder. I think the letter was actually in response to uh, some conversations that I had already had with the Republican Governors Association about the possibility of being supportive of my candidacy in a primary. Mm -hmm. And so I think the letter was in an effort to get the scales back to neutral. Uh, again, I've talked to many of those uh, signatories to the letter who, who support me as well. And so the letter aside, the question that you ask, I'm not really running against any other individual. I'm running to be the governor of the state. Mm -hmm. I know how hard that's going to be. Uh, we've already, in these six days, uh, we have an extraordinary team already put in place. Uh, I've been able to, uh, to get some of the grassroots supporters from Governor Blunt's uh, organization uh, who are on our side of the ledger, who've been working very hard these last days. Uh, so I'm very confident. Uh, given what we've been able to accomplish in the last six days, uh, just, uh, just what an extraordinary effort this is. And again, this, is no, this speaks nothing against either or others who may want to join the fray. But I think, especially after we were demoralized on the Republican side after the governor's announcement, uh, the sense of enthusiasm uh, and, and dedication and loyalty uh, has just been, it's been inspiring to me. It's what drives me every day, and so we want to continue to build that momentum. And that's why we, we go from here, we go to Joplin, we go to Springfield, uh, and beyond, uh, just captivating or, 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 or taking advantage of that tremendous enthusiasm. And you're using John Hancock and associate as a consultant, is that correct, for your campaign? John's on our team, as well as others. What, what are you hoping him to bring to your campaign? He was the governor's consultant as well. We, we're, 
we are putting, Jason, when, when all is said and done, mm -hmm. uh, and you will see the personalities of those that we're bringing on board, uh, you know, to those who may be watching the nightly news or reading uh, your blog on the newspaper, those names will mean very little. But uh, for those people who actually watch politics, we've got an extraordinary group of people, uh, some very prominent names, but more importantly than just prominent names, people that are going to help me get the job done. One last quick question. One more. The fact that, the, oh, Congressman, you, you mentioned a difficult climate of ethics, and um, Governor Blunt has had his share of um, the issue with making emails public. What advice would you give the governor, and how would you perhaps handle that issue? Well, as he's leaving office, and, and I think uh, has dealt with those issues in his own way, I think looking forward, what we need to do, and one of the things I want to talk a lot about, is to help restore the faith and trust that people should have in their government. Uh, unfortunately, what I see in Jefferson City, and, and this, no disrespect to any personalities, but I see Jefferson City becoming entrenched in a partisan gridlock, just like we are witnessing in Washington, D.C., uh, that someone won't support an idea because they don't like where the idea originates from. Uh, what I want to do, and what I have as a record of reaching across and building consensus, is we have to have an open, honest, accountable government. Uh, you deserve that. You're paying for it. Uh, and so one of the things that I, I want to do is, is to talk about a number of things as far as governmental reforms. Uh, we'll, we'll be rolling out some specific proposals in the near future uh, along that line. Uh, but I think people want problem solvers. We have these elections because they want people to act on their best interest instead of to go there and to try to score political points or have their own personal political ambitions realized. Uh, so that's something we'll be talking about. And, and again, with all respect, for those who have been entrenched in Jefferson City politics for decades, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to bring that fresh perspective that I intend to bring.